Ooh, I'm going to bumble through with another intro. Hey, everybody. This is Jonathan Smith, DM for the upcoming Gear and campaign live play with Terrain. <laughs> Last week, I uh, just idly ran through my molding process, which one day I'll clean up and actually make a more streamlined video. Maybe. I doubt it, though. So today I want to run through an idea I had, which is, man, I am generally absolutely tired of great dungeons. Good God, they're boring. <clears throat> I was watching Black Magic Crafts video. He had the same feeling on it, which he does very good. Uh, he does excellent videos. Check out his channel if you're into crafting at all. But uh, he had an excellent opinion of it, which is... Uh, not all stone is gray, and that's true. He also did some really great, uh, some really great work with uh, recoloring wood, because wood isn't always brown and pretty and new, like it, like when you buy uh, seal coated stuff for decking and things like that at the store, at the uh, improvement store. It's got that pretty sheen to it, nice color, great smell, almost like a sap. It, it's stuff that's been out in the weather forever. Of course it's gonna look weird. And it's gonna be different colors. So we're gonna paint this, this color, which is a volcanic -esque. It's almost like an oozy orange biohazard style uh, dungeon paint scheme. So, got our palette. I use this clear palette because it looks cooler than a plate. And that's about the only reason I use it. I, I like it very much. Uh, anyway, we're using AC Moore craft paint, standard craft paint. Uh, the very base of it, silly enough, Dorian Gray. Yep, name of the color. Grandma's run craft stores. Keep that in mind. Because if you're going to start digging into terrain and doing fun stuff, you're going to deal with grandma jokes. And they're worse than dad jokes, I promise. And uh, we're using dark orange as well carrot and one thing that I found was I had bought uh, the neon yellow by accident the neons are really <coughs> high viscosity so the coverage on these plaster tiles and dungeon pieces I forgot I glued him together whoops picked him up the wrong way let's do a single piece that's not broken I'm gonna I'm start with this guy brand new fresh freshly painted black in my house because I'll do what I want. It's my house. Um, but either way, I did get the uh, ceramic coat yellow. It's a denser yellow. It's got a lot more um, pigment in it. It offers a lot more coverage. And that's the final dry brush of the... Uh, that's the final dry brush color on this guy. So, here we go. Gonna, gonna hit, hit our Dorian Gray here gonna put most of it off on the palette. I don't clean my plastic palette. I don't clean my acrylic palette. I just let it gum up. It doesn't gum up. It just dries up and it, uh, it works just as effectively as paper towels without killing a bunch of trees. Yeah, the environment. So what we want to do with this base layer is go on heavy, but not super heavy. Not dry though. Not this is not a this is not a full dry brush, but with me with this uh, method that I used, I wanted to have the black lining of each individual brick wall, you know, brick in the wall, all these big old blocks. I wanted them to stand out clearly and pretty, you know, be very pretty, and at the same time not just be super light and showing the black through all that much, because as we add layers, it's gonna get down into these grooves, like these floor grooves here. Uh, again, everything's based off of Hearst Arts molds. And uh, you know, I know they get boring to look at if you look at a giant four by eight table full of Hearst Art molds, it's gonna get redundant at some point. So new paint jobs help <laughs> break it up a little bit. And these this coloring, I, I worked on this throughout the week I started, I started it last week conceptually. I just had the idea and I thought, man, that'd be cool. What can I do with it? And I, I gave it the effort and uh, that neon yellow really bummed me out because it just wasn't wasn't covering anything with a, a dry brush. 
uh, as a final coat. It was too light, wasn't sticking to anything. So now these guys are going to end up either on a probably a muddy mat more than likely, not like a not like a grass mat in the play in the play area. Probably something darker than that, nice brown. So I'm not sure that it matters that I paint the bottom or anything like that. It's just all gonna blend in. And I might mess with some flocking at some point. So I should probably pay a little more attention to the camera. This is a little eh, I'll give them a best effort here. I'm just a dude. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm kidding. Tell all your friends. Maybe they'd like to with with friends you can play D D more often. That's exciting. More friends, more D D. Hell yeah. It's a way to live. So since I have, I'm gonna let him dry just a little bit. I don't like to work too precisely. I'm a lazy painter, absolutely. That's why the shelf behind me, my, where my D&D book collection is, is now where my miniature collection is, and uh, I'll get around to them at some point. My collection keeps growing, of course, because I'll need them, and uh, yeah, I'm playing them months in advance. I actually am very enthused about a specific set of miniatures that I picked up from an alternate game entirely. And uh, I've wrenched them around and made them part of my plot. And they were on a deep clearance at my local comic book store, uh, Comic Store West. Uh, more of a game store than a comic store. Don't let their name fool you. It should be Game Store West, but there's no Game Store East. There's only a comic store. Weird bunch. Anyhow. So I, I had walked in there on a Friday on my lunch break and found these minis on uh, Deep Clarence. And I was so enthused about it because it's like a full unit for, I think it's hordes or a war machine. Might be war, I think it's a war machine. I'm not really sure. But uh, they fit. And that's the biggest thing about getting back into this hobby after years and years of having collected through high school and painting miniatures through high school. I used to go to Comic Store West and paint on Friday nights because it was paint night and the shop sponsored paint kit, a giant paint kit for uh, everybody to use. It was awesome to be able to use Games Workshop paints when I spent most of my money on their minis. You know, you get into that fun childhood routine of spending 30 bucks on a unit from Warhammer Fantasy every week back when it was reasonably priced. Games Workshop. So, getting back into this hobby at an adult age, you don't want to go throwing, you know, money hand over fist at anything. And that's kind of rough. You know, I just bought, uh, I just bought a couple of minis from WizKids. Cause they were neat. I got some townspeople. I'm not big on resin or plastic miniatures at all. I know I've bitched about it before, probably, but uh, maybe in private, maybe in public, who knows. But anyhow, um, not big on resin figures, but when it comes to townspeople and population and realizing that eventually I'm gonna have scenes in towns and I'm really gonna have to have I really want to be immersive with the miniatures that it's not just I'm throwing out a nickel and suddenly that's an orc guard or something goofy like that. That's the that's the that's the king of Bretonia, etc. Yeah, stuck on games or show. But uh, you know, I don't I wanna I don't wanna break the moment by not having at least something that comes close. And uh, so picking up resin for townspeople it's worth it and still at the same time you know whiz kids was five or six bucks per fiber five or six bucks per blister and luckily they're unpainted um i do actually like to paint miniatures it, it makes me focus a lot more than what i'm doing now i'm not even thinking about what i'm doing right now i'm thinking about you guys doing cool stuff behind your computer screen i hope you're picking up a paintbrush and doing cool stuff Roll a, roll a random encounter table. Let me know what you did. Anyhow. <laughs> um, but yeah, with them being five or six bucks for unpainted, they're nice, they're good quality, and 
this is the only way I'm getting a mimic and they're not metal and it bums me out but it works you know, I can't I can't be hyper choosy when it comes to getting back into it as an adult because I don't again I don't want to have to go and seek out crazy expensive amounts of old minis and you know digging up Ralph Partha figures and grunted you know grunted Grenadier line stuff and you know the old AD and D minis for the sake of like the Wizards Lab, one of my favorite box sets from them from uh, Grenadier. It's a great box set. It, it was wonderful and uh, you know most people that have it still in one piece, it's unpainted and they're selling it at a collector's price. It's just not. It's something that I'm gonna take and use, which is my whole issue is that everything that I pick up, I'm gonna use, and if I break it, I'm out of luck. And if I break something I paid a collector value for, I'm way more out of luck than I thought. So, all right. I'm gonna let him be a little, he a little spotty. See, this is the, uh, this is the cracked floor. It's a nice one. No, this isn't cracked floor. This is, I forget what that is actually. Um, anyway, this is a really neat floor, and the field stone, the field stone there, and I'm actually gonna let him be really, really chunky right there. You can see, he's got all his lines, super, super obvious there. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I like to drop my throat a little bit and uh, lower my tone, just because I hear it's dulcet and relaxing, and ASMR. Ooh. Gonna clean our brush off. Yeah. We're gonna clean the gray off the brush using our own hands. That's what we're gonna do. Look, I'm a gray. You knew it all along. Under this, top knot. Yep, top knot. Top knot, neck tattoo. Tattooed knuckles. D&D. &D. We're all like that, we know it. In any case, I'm a gray alien. It happens. So, all right. Now what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna show you my crotch here. And uh, this is my, my little workstation here. So the first, uh, the first guy that we painted, he's dry and ready to go. So no gray is coming out of that. It's not changing the color of that, um, of the dark orange. Dark orange, it sounds like a third. Sounds like a third party comic book creator that just does um, too much Sugar Man. I don't even know if anybody remembers what too much Coffee Man was. That was a, that was a comic worse than Johnny the Homicidal Maniac, the end. Anyway, so we're gonna take most of the dark orange off the brush. You know, you can use your hand. This is far soluble, who cares? You're good. And we're just gonna go light, 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 light. Yeah, nice and light. See that that gray base, it lightens it up just a bit instead of basing on instead of just going into our two lighter shades, which normally any process of painting with uh terrain and stuff, I use three steps. It's base coat black. Throw on a throw on a throw on a layer of whatever color, and then throw on some highlights. We're going double highlights today. This is like this is like pressing the button on the vending machine and, and getting a a second Dr Pepper. It's just a it's just a bonus extra step of work for you to do. Just that guy a little bit. There we go. So this orange is just. To me, now, heads up, anybody listening, watching, whatever, I'm colorblind. Good luck. Learning from me. Don't learn anything from me. Just use the method, you know? The, just, just learn new methods, new, new steps to take. Just, just do that, don't go color specific with me. Don't, break out, a, don't bro, break out a chroma key screen and ask me what color it is, because I'll probably tell you yellow or some weird thing like that, so. But in either case, to me, this really brings out the, gives the orange some depth, so it's almost a reddish, but just not, not like looking at a, 
like a like a like a peel that's been sitting in a bowl in the kitchen for a week and a half because you forgot about it or whatever. You know, where it starts to get translucent and kind of weird looking. Just, yeah, there we go. Get a little messy with it. Yeah, but you see it's still got the gray in there. Gray flecks inside in that little chunky thing. There's a cat. Hi, Brian Posehn. Not Brian Posehn the comedian. Brian Posehn the cat. <laughs> uh, she wanted to say hi. It's She's going to make this game, whenever we get to it, she's going to make this game a... Hopefully not living nightmare. Hopefully not. So he's good to go. Got it in there if you look at it the right way in the right light under five daylight bulbs in my dining room light fixture. Uh, it looks real pretty to me. That's a good base to work with. So we got Dorian Gray and Dark Orange. Dark Orange. Judge Red, that's probably what books they'd publish. That'd be their key trade, more than likely. So we'll get on to the next piece. Mm, I like this little weird little ringing noise. I don't know if you can hear it on, on there. Get out of here, you goofy cat. She's a trash cat, she doesn't know any better. She came from a dumpster. It wasn't prom night. Just want you to know that. It was middle of summer. I doubt anybody has prom in the middle of summer. I think that's like a pre-summer thing. But, here you go. And to speed this along and shorten this video to something that's not 45 minutes of me whispering loudly at the camera. Um, we're just gonna wait for that first guy to dry. And uh, he should be dry by the time I get to it. And I'll just paint these ones off camera. I really don't care. That's up to me. That's my choice, guys. But I want you to be involved. And uh, it's fun stuff. Yep. But see, even here. Now, if you look here on this side of it. Um, get my fingers out of the shadow. So this half of it, that orange showed out really nice. This side of it, that gray was a little, still, still a little too wet to work with. But... It's now muddy. It's gross. It's like a lot of people traipsed through this dungeon and it's got some gross thing going on. That's exciting. That's a neat thing. So now it's a, it's a, little, it's a little extra highlight. Free. By accident. That's always neat. But I mean, even that with, so here's the orange nice and bright. Right there on the front of that. Boop. Yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, that, that orange is bright, nice and bright. Nice and bright right there. Yep. Nice and bright orange. And then in there, you see it's still it's got a muddy, it's got a like muddy texture color coloring to it on the base there. Looks just as good. It's a dungeon. Doesn't need to be hyper precise. It's old. It lives underground. It lives. If anybody can name that map in the comments, just willy nilly. I'd, I'd, I'd have five of you if you live around here, I guess. That's all I can offer at this moment. Just good, stern high five. I'll clean the paint off my hand first, promise. But yeah, that's my favorite map. I'll spoil it for everybody. Halls of Under Mountain, the fourth edition. Halls of Under Mountain. I don't know why. That was one of my favorite fun house living sandbox dungeon that forgotten that they ever came up with for Forgotten Realms. Thought it was one of the most fantastic ideas they ever had. It is a, it is a true definition of a mega dungeon. And then they came out with Halls of Under Mountain 2. And you're gonna single sheet me a map in that box set. Get out of here. That's nonsense. So Anyway, back to the brush being clean again. Run against your hand, it's cool. You have a sink, you got a tub, toilet, whatever. Throw your hand in it after you're finished. Wash that off. You're all good to go. You'll be okay. So, now we're moving on to Carrot. 
Here on the bottom, not on the top. Never on the top. And this one, we are gonna dry brush. Yes, he is. Just wanna get in there a little bit. Yeah, I know, I went a little crazy with the amounts of paint that I poured out. A little wasteful, it's okay. Makes my palette look cooler. So, we can get as much off of that as we can to make sure that it shows through. Bam. Nope, too dry. <laughs> Guys, I'm winging it here. I hope you know that. There we go, yeah, nice light stroke. Light stroke. Light stroke like you smell toast for half a second. Yep. Yep, right there. Really bring it out. Yeah, get in there, make it look gross. Like just, just weird. You know, this is one of the more fascinating things with terrain for me lately, is that painting these got painting these, uh, these hallways, which is the only thing I've done, because I'm lazy, and I just haven't had the time lately. Um, it's like, you remember those color change matchbox cars, that we, or uh, Hot Wheels cars that we were obsessed with as, as children, if you're in your mid-30s? It's just, it, it, it's like that. You know, when, when you're dry brushing, that's what it should look like. It should look like you, you, you threw some cold water on your Corvette Z06 1998 or whatever year it was, and just kind of kind of starts dragging out and changing just a little bit, just a little bit. And what you're doing is you're catching the edges there. Yeah, and you still got that nice black base coat looking real fine. Looking real fine. So not super dry brush yet. Super dry brush, we're gonna wait for the very, 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 very last. That's gonna be the ceramic coat, the uh, ceramic coat. Luscious lemon. Just luscious lemon. Mm. So, there you see some walls. Got some walls with the additional highlight. I haven't done the floor yet. This is flagstone floor. I do remember that mold. That's one of my favorites. Just because I'm more fascinated by floors than I am with walls. I don't know what it is. I guess I'm a free spirit. At heart. Probably not. They just cover more quickly. I, l I like them because they have more coverage. They, 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 they make bigger things quickly. It's nice. It's the floor versus the wall. The wall's thin, but gets high. Floor. Just throw the shit out there. Square it up. Good to go. So anyway, there we are. Yeah. Looking nice and snotty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking nice and super snotty. I should flip my camera over at some point. Like, I'll have to get one of those, like, sweet handheld rigs or, like, one of those weird helmet cams or something that I can actually shoot this with the 12 megapixel 4K 60 frame per second camera that I bought it for instead of the front-facing camera because I'm an idiot I just I need to make sure that the picture's right <laughs> while I talk to it I'm just talking to myself it's cool so hope you guys are enjoying watching me do this I wouldn't either that's your call so there we go yeah yeah Yep, and get a couple good strokes on there. Those are the ones that really stop everybody's plans for at least three days. Shouldn't be. Don't fight it. If your paintbrush stops laying down paint while you're dry brushing large areas, don't fight it. Let it be. Move on. Go, go right back to that palette. You get what you need. You roll with it. Gotta get, gotta get 
excited and enthused. Gotta get hype, gotta hit the moment. Gotta let your Adderall kick in way too late in the day. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on. That's why I even did this at close to midnight on a Sunday. So, there we go. And, I'm not even sure what time it is. Two's ready. Let him sit and dry. Do it again. Nope. Oh, I'm, I'm dumb as a brick. Makeup wipe. Already used. We're all good to go. You salvage that paintbrush now that I dropped it on my... He didn't see what I did. I dropped it on my palette and rolled it in four different colors. That's a little annoying when you're trying to clean off a brush. It really hampers uh, progress. Just a little. A lot. A lot. It's like, it's like getting kicked in the shin right after finding out you have shin splints. Something goofy like that. I don't know. I'm not really good with jokes. A little dry. So, now. Now. There we go. We got three, three layers on. Plus the primer, which is just Rusto. Rustoleum, flat, uh, flat black primer, and the two in one or whatever. Four bucks at Walmart. Buy a can, it'll last you a little. And then when you're done, go back and get some more. That's what you do. It's kind of the process there. A to B life. Anyway, so this last ceramic coat, this luscious lemon. This is going to be our highlight. This is going to really just... It, heads up, by the way. I just found this out right this second. This snots up way faster than regular craft paint. It really uh, draws the moisture out. It can let it sit for too long. So I got to play with it for a second. Don't let it get hard. Counterintuitive. Don't leave it out too long. Or else you're going to have to play with it. Soften it back up. So, on that right there, done, done hit skin, I don't think, unless I'm yellow, but bam, and all we want to do right there is catch those edges, yeah, you see the difference, see it, and then every now and then a bristle will leave a nice big thick yellow spot on her, yeah, mm-hmm, oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's real nice. Mm. Oh yeah. So, with the dry brushing, go on light. Make sure your brush is not throwing. As soon as it stops throwing paint off, hit your piece. Boop. Hit it real good. And then if you don't like how much is showing up. If it's not showing up too much, if it's not showing up quite enough, bam. Take less off before you hit it. Yeah, there we go. Now we got like that weird Necron army yellowy standout. Yeah, there we go. I don't know if that's true. Guys, again, colorblind. Not the greatest painter in the world. But that does look better, I'm assuming. Wild assumptions. It's like back when we used to have to take pictures of the film and you really, really believed that you had a great picture and you were gonna be the next Ansel Adams. You got it back and it turns out you left the lens cap on. Or like one of your friends got drunk and put it in his pants and took a picture. You know, it's just unacceptable. Here you thought you had an award-winning piece, something beautiful you could send to all the galleries. Blurry balls. Somebody Sasquatched you. It's just not good. There you go. Yeah. See now right there, I, I put a little too much on my brush. And uh, 
which is fine. Make sure that the, the heaviest of the lightness is uh, up top there. That's the only logic, is that you gotta imagine, got some pretend lanterns in there. Pretend little, now these are, by the way, this is only an inch and a half tall. That's the height of most miniatures. I did that because when I'm looking down, I'm gonna build another table, which I'll be, uh, I'll be featuring in another video later on. Building another table with a sunken play, sunken terrain field. Terrain field, that sounds like a pop wave synth band. Um, so that way that I can look down and appreciate the image of a miniature standing inside of it. So, but yeah, I like him. He came out great. Um, the overall color scheme, I mean, to my eyes, I really enjoyed it. it I feel like it's maybe like necromancy energy is hanging out somewhere and it's being fueled by, I don't know, something weird. Here, let's DM it right now. So the uh, dungeon that your characters are walking, that your party's walking through is this color. Why? Why? Well, it turns out that after a time of having what could only be supposed as electricity in our modern minds in these towns across this country, um, it turns out it was some high elven magic that had been stolen by a, by a, a, a naughty necromancer in training. And uh, the power supply is in this dungeon and it needs to be stopped because it turns out that it's it's uh, a giant cauldron and they're they're burning victims inside of it to fuel these towns and their lights and, and people are completely ignorant of it and your party is there to, to stop it all because they've gotten tipped off that something strange is going on in their neighborhood and and they need to do something about it and this uh this great wizard with this stolen elf magic has really really bastardized the process and and uh, made something wonderful and helpful but at the same time horrific because he's going into the outlands and taking over taking all these townsfolk and hut living weirdos taking all of them and murdering them for the comfort and excitement of those in a more wealthy area boom I just DM'd for you. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you stuck around for it. Good Lord. So, there we go. That was Dorian Gray. Followed by Dark Orange. Followed by Carrot. And then the Ceramicoat. Luscious Lemon. Which is really nice too. It's an extra fixative for the outer edges of this. So it doesn't suck in moisture and get anything weird going on like that. Plaster is a little finicky to work with over the long term. Like I'm storing stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm painting, I'm doing, I'm taking care of well in advance. And these things, I prefer most things that I have to um, have a... Uh, Long-term shelf life, very long-term, like a library, like a library length uh, shelf life. So, there you are. So, this was the original one that I worked on this week, and this is now. And I will say that in the side-by-side, -side, this one here is ob more than obviously much brighter. The reason is that I had fought a couple of layers of the neon yellow onto this in hopes that it would pick start picking up highlights it didn't so i actually went back over everything with a uh, dry brushing of dorian gray to darken the base to darken the the top coat up before i put the ceramic coat on top of it so you got an active lit hallway an active lit hallway by the cauldron of supposable that's not even a word of supposed electric energy by that wizard. Look, it's lit up. 
you follow that those four steps, you get it nice and bright. Look at those. Oh, it's coming out so nice. You could black. I mean, you could run a black water uh, black wash over it. That'd be great too. And that one's lit up, so you know, so your players know that it's in the right that they're heading in the right direction because this one is this one is obviously lit. It's pumping out the energy the same way, but that one's lit more, so they know that they're getting closer and closer to the source. Just fun stuff that you could do with it. That was a big old silly that I made up all on my own. Sorry these videos are so long. I ramble and I don't write anything in advance because it just doesn't feel right if I do. So I am writing some other stuff in advance, just some quick news about Giridan. Giridan is in process currently. Uh, I am world building. I'm, I'm going as far back as I started off on a new planet and figured out what was happening on that new planet. Um, not a plug, that's just my coffee cup. Uh, either case, so I have been world building lately with Giridan just to really, really give it some depth and some breadth with uh, the miniatures I spoke of earlier. I want to give them a reason to have existed anyway. So it's all backstory and it's going to be coming out as maybe a PDF, maybe, uh, maybe a print, maybe videos. I don't know, but the backstory is going to come out first and then we're going to get our player group together and we're going to haul ass through the first part of this campaign. It's going to be a weekly show, it's gonna be awesome, but hopefully, who knows. I truly, truly believe Giridan is gonna be one of my favorite everything. Uh, of course it's gonna be my favorite everything because I, I, I set the kernel of the idea out. I'm very excited to find a group of players that can mesh well and make this story theirs. I, that's the biggest thing is it's a big living, breathing thing. And I got some crazy ideas coming up with that. And uh, you'll be hearing about it soon. So, peace. I hope your commute sucked just a little less today because you listen to me for this long. See you guys.